Okay, we're by an orange tree right now. Um, and fruits on the orange tree, they're like this beautiful, great felt smelling flower. And if you ever smelt orange blossoms before in your life, it's really incredible. Well, the bees are attracted to that. And that's what happens to pollinate an orange. They come on the flower, they move the pollen around, and an orange comes out of it. But what about mangoes? These are all these beautiful trees behind me here. It's a different thing that happens there. Flies actually pollinate mango trees, not bees. So I think that's really cool and I wanna share with you. Let's go look at these mango trees and look at what their flowers look like. And let's see if they smell as nice as an orange flower. Actually they don't because they have to attract a fly. So let's check them out. So yeah, these are all mango trees behind me. They were in the shade for years. So we are actually helping to restore them and nurture them back to health. We're gonna be putting earthworms and wood chips around. But let's check this mango tree out over here and show you what the flowers look like. Here we are. These are mango flowers right here. But these, as they open, these are not opened yet. If you come real close to me, let's check this out. You see that? That is a mango flower. You notice it's not real colorful. It's not real smelly. It does have a smell, almost like a little bit like rotten fish. Um, and that's because this has to attract a fly and not a bee to it. And that's what's gonna pollinate. And each one of these flowers, as they're pollinated, you can look right here, they're trying to turn into a little fruit right there. They've been pollinated already. And now fruits will hang where these flowers are. And we're gonna show you that in our next shot over here. So this flower you see in front of you here, you can see where some of the flowers were not pollinated, but you can see right here where one of the flowers out of the bunch was pollinated. So this whole strand that we see here in front of us, this was one of those set of flowers and not every flower gets pollinated, but the flowers that do turn into mangoes. And there you go right there. So here's a great example of this tree that's flowering. And you can see that it has some fruits right next to it, inside of it that are gonna soon be mangoes. And again, this is not bees that are pollinating this. This is flies. And we have these beehives right next to us here under the mango trees. And we're gonna show you that if you see them on our mango trees, they're usually collecting sap to make um, propolis with, and they're not pollinating the flowers. Really cool. Here in this mango patch, we have some bees under here, but these bees are actually getting all of their nectar from the coconut trees. Coconut trees produce an incredible high amount of nectar. So it's amazing what we're gonna find in these hives is gonna be kiavi and coconut honey. They do love being around the mangoes because they use the sap to collect and make propolis for their hive as well. So that's what's going on here. Just wanted to share it with you. Check it out. So as you can see, we have our beehives here behind us in the shade under the mango trees here, but they're not here for pollinating the mango trees. They will collect propolis from the trees that they use in their hive, but they're here to pollinate the coconut trees that are next to us and that's where they're getting all their nectar for the hive from. Um, the reason they're not pollinating the mango trees is that it is actually flies that pollinate the mango trees. So just an interesting little fact to check out and our beautiful bees behind us here. This is my green waste operation out here where I do a lot of the composting. I create these mounds and I use them for my fertility hubs. If you look this coconut patch here now, that's just been sitting under trees for many years, we're revitalizing it and we're using the same islands in the sun uh, sort of a model that I've put forward to take care of this. We're here on Maui and we're at this coconut patch that has been neglected for years and we are regenerating it. We're revitalizing some life into it. And that's really important because coconuts are one of the original voyaging plants that came with the Hawaiians. And it's, it was such a huge part of the culture here. If you go down in the South Pacific, Tahiti, Samoa, everything has fresh homemade coconut cream in it. People use coconut oil for their sunscreen. The um, fiber is used like a nut milk bag to squeeze things through and to wrap things in. The fronds are used for roofing and even hats and all sorts of other things. So coconut has so many incredible uses. It's considered to be the tree of life. It has water, it has food, it has shelter. And I really wanna help bring that back to our culture here in Hawaii. And by showing people how all things coconut can serve us. Also how we can serve the coconuts. They're a great carbon sequestering plant. They pull carbon out of the atmosphere. They put it into the ground. They're great for the bees. 
bees pollinate, they have an astronomical amount of nectar. And that's why they make coconut sugar because they have so much nectar in them. And they're uh, really in part, an important part of the culture here. This coconut patch has sat what we call defunct. Without water, it's been covered with giant trees. The coconuts are planted too close together. So at this point, we're thinning some of the coconuts out. We're taking all the waste that's been left in here and we're composting with that on the other side here so that we can turn that into nutritious food for them. In the next year, these trees will be cleaned and thinned and you'll see what a really healthy coconut patch looks like out of something that's just been left in neglect for the last 10, 15 years. Um, this is a great resource. This will produce 30, 40,000 coconuts a year. And we have a different tactic. Instead of taking the young coconuts just for juice, we actually want the old coconuts for coconut husk, for potting material, for oil, for coconut cups, all different things we can make out of the coconut. We want to actually let it come to its full potential and stay with us. And we're going to take you on a journey of how we're going to bring this coconut patch back to health. And we're also going to show you all things coconut so we can bring it back into our culture here in Hawaii.